Hello, hello, and good evening. Um, hi, welcome, welcome once again. So here we are to um, continue working and to complete actually our class number 10. That's what we're going to be working on tonight. And well, as per usual, remember that we are going to have, well, a few things we're going to be covering this evening. The main part is probably going to be the three word phrasal verbs we just had time to touch base on um, last night. But tonight we're going to go way deeper into um, these three word phrasal verbs. We also have a conversation that we're going to have to read and practice to some extent um, to complete the, the whole of this class. Now, if we have some time um, at the end of it, we are also going to get to work a little bit on the activities assigned for session three, as you guys are supposed to have already finished, or I mean, we have already covered all the topics and you guys are supposed to have already finished um, all the activities regarding section three. So that's like part of the plan we have for this evening. Of course, as per usual, we're going to have one question at the beginning. And tonight, I want us to get a little creative. Now, hopefully you guys have people you admire, people you have followed for some time. And if you do, well, tonight is going to be the opportunity for you to share some information and why not to mention it? Some dreams you may have about these people. So the question I want you guys to be answering this evening is pretty straightforward. And it would be, who is your favorite? I mean, sorry, sorry, sorry. Who is a famous person? Who is a famous person you would like to get to know? Who is a famous person you would like to get to know? And what would you like to do with that person? So if you had the chance to get to know, I don't know, maybe um, Barack Obama, let's say he's a person you admire or he's a person you would like to get to know. So if you had a chance to get to know Barack Obama, what would you like to do with him? And if he was a person you would like to, um, to get to know? Um, probably in my case, well, I would like to, I don't know, maybe um, have a tour on, on Washington, D.C. with him and talk about some of the things that he enjoyed during his time in office. So that would be my idea. Of course, as I mentioned, you can go as creative as you want and you can share any ideas um, that you may have on what would you like to do with those people. So we're going to start with Evelyn this evening. And remember, the question is, who is a famous person you would like to get to know and what would you like to, per to do with that person? Or, or um, what would be something you would like to share with that person? So Evelyn, you may start. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. I was thinking of a famous person that I want to meet. And I, it's a question that I really never think about. Uh -huh. but I believe if I want to meet a famous person to be in my WhatsApp because okay. I think she is a very a very clever uh, person and is a good actor. So I know that he's very very how do you say involved involved or activist. But yeah, she's really, she's an activist. She's involved in, in many things, in many, like, um, good acts. Yeah, so maybe. Uh, I want okay. To so what would you like to do with Emma Watson? If you had a chance to get to know her, um, what would be one thing that you yourself would like to do with her? Maybe I want to be involved too. Uh, actually think that I don't know uh, how do you say obra de callao or something like that Hola, perdón, ¿cómo? how do you say obra de callao or, or a good. program with, with a, people with to help many people a goodwill a goodwill so you would like to be part of a goodwill with Emma Watson then yes 
All right, very cool. Okay, so that sounds like a really nice idea on something we may do with a famous person we have or the, the opportunity to know. And yeah, Emma Watson is very, very famous. And I think it will be great to get to know her. All right, now um, from Joel. So Joel, who will be a famous person you would like to know? And what would you like to do with that person? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Uh, I was thinking about the question. Uh, it's a hard question. <laughs> but maybe talk, talking about famous famous uh, people, maybe I would like to, to have now David Bowie, who oh. died in 2016, like I guess. He was a famous singer in the past. And I would like to ask him some questions about his songs, you know, like the song Starman or Life on Mars, which I like a lot. And maybe I would like to sing those songs with him and, you know, just to share and hang out. All right. So you would like to get to know David Bowie and ask him yes. about some of the songs that he wrote. That will be an amazing idea as, yeah, I mean, at least from my part, I know that he um, he was, a, well, a good reference, like in the 70s or 80s around there. Yes. He was one of the biggest references, or I mean, he hasn't even been mentioned in, in other songs, in other um, kinds of art. So David Bowie will be a really, very influential person um, to get to know. And as you said, it will be amazing to hear his opinion on why um, he wrote some of the songs that he, that he has. So, I mean, it will be amazing. All right, so that's your part. Um, how about Emma? Who will be Emma, a famous person you would like to get to know? And what would be something you would like to do with that person? Well, I would like to know two persons. Mm -hmm. And the first one is, well, Simon Tichon, because he is a great actor for me and he's handsome. I would like to have a date with him. <laughs> All right. And the second person is Bill Gates because he's a very smart person. And I like to learn about him, about many things that he's doing and he has been doing during his life because I think that it's important to learn about people who eat intelligent and uh, use their i want oh. to say that they use to intelligence yeah. oh, okay. and know his ideas and that's all all right yeah so the first one i don't know i don't really know the guy you mentioned but bill gates i do know and i also know some special information about him for example the fact that i mean according to media and in some um, publications he has already um elaborated his will when we talk about a will in english we're talking about an herencia see so he has already elaborated his will and in most of it like most of the money he has, as he's, I think, the second or the third most um, wealthy person in the world, he is planning on giving it to, um, well, to different goodwill actions and mainly to help people in Africa. I know that there has been a lot of rumors about him in the last couple of years because many people say that it was his idea or it was um, his making the fact that we got the virus that has been affecting the world. Um, I don't know if you guys heard any of that, but there has been many rumors following that idea that he only wanted to create um, this virus so he could get even more wealthy after all the research and all the things that um, had to be done just to get to, to the vaccine that we now use. But still, I think he is an amazing person. And also looking back into his, his backstory or his old story, it's, it's just 
incredible all he has achieved so yeah it will be an amazing idea to get to know him you know honestly if you will if you were to ask me if i was to meet a famous person um and the question that i'm i'm, I'm asking you is like what would you like those people to do with you i would love it uh, or i would love to ask them for some money i will do it i mean if, if i had like a, like a carta blanca like uh the option to ask anything i will ask for some money i know it's it's a little bit selfish but i will do so because i mean why or how is he going to use all the money that he has like it's too much for a lifetime but that's just me you know i wouldn't really ask for a half of his wealth but i will ask for a portion of, of the money he has all right um moving on melissa alfaro tell me who will be a famous person you would like to get to know and what would you like to do with that person hi teacher good evening good evening um i would like to meet uh can you raise okay or equal john wick <laughs> yes um i think that he is a very humble and generous person Um, i have seen how he dresses mm -hmm. and how he shares with the other person and i like it and so uh, I think that uh, he is a good actor and a good uh, human. Okay. And, and I like all movies of John Wick. All right. And I would like to uh, share with, with him mm -hmm. uh, about um, your... Um, uh, I, Career? I forget the word. <laughs> uh, your um, uh, experience. Oh, okay. His his experience. All right. Very good. So, um, one second. I just want to want to clarify that in my case, I normally refer to Keanu as God. I mean, me and my girlfriend, we do that. Um, like two months ago, I don't know who else may do that, but we are like creating a, a Funko collection together. We have been acquiring some Funkos and we're putting them all together in, in, in a, um, like a wooden thingy that I built up or I bought. Yeah, that one, I bought it. Anyway, um, we got a Keanu um, Funko like three months ago. And when we finally got it, uh, for some reason, we just referred to it as God, because I don't know if you have ever seen any movie in which he plays that role, but we consider that he will do an amazing job as the next God in, in Hollywood. As we have had um, this guy, I think his name is, no, it's not Denzel Washington, the other one, <sighs> forgot his name. But there has been one guy who has been God in almost every single movie. But I think the next one could be Keanu. But anyway, um, he also, as you mentioned, he seems to be a very humble person. He um, seems to be someone who likes to share what he has with the rest of the humans around him. However, in John Wick, he wasn't really that good of a human. He was acting, but still he was killing many people. Um, but I know it's just an act. But yeah, he seems to be an amazing actor and an amazing person. So I think it will be great to have a chance to talk to him and to get to know his approach on the things that he has done during his career. So yeah, that will be also a really good pick for a, um, a famous person to get to know. All right, and last but not least, we are going to hear from Beatriz, who will be a famous person you would like to get to know, and what would you like to do with that person, Beatriz? Uh, I, will, I would like to meet uh, Michelle Obama uh, for being a brave and hard working woman. Uh, I will congratulate her for her great work uh, when 
when she when she was first um lady i i don't a lady mm -hmm. uh, and i i will ask uh, her for advice on how to achieve success okay cool yeah that will be something great to do with michelle obama i don't know if you knew this and because you're learning english I will recommend that you listen to her pod, to her podcast. Um, no sé, eso es, se los voy a decir en español porque de hecho es algo que nunca les había comentado en ninguna clase. No sé si ustedes tengan esa costumbre de escuchar podcast, eh, porque en realidad son, desde mi punto de vista, bastante interesantes, eh, dependiendo ¿verdad? de lo que te guste, porque pues hay podcasts casi acerca que de todo, así como existen también los géneros de música. Y hay uno que es específicamente acerca de eso, de Michelle Obama y cómo ella... Eh, considera verdad que se puede alcanzar el éxito entonces y ese está disponible en Spotify y la verdad es bastante genial el inglés que utiliza si bien es cierto quizás a veces es un poco um, avanzado y desligado de lo que nosotros usamos por lo general pero pues es un reto bastante bueno creo yo um, entonces sería recomendable para los demás, igual, ¿verdad? O sea, no necesariamente solo existe ese podcast, existen acerca de eh, temas de tecnología, temas um, en el caso de Emma, tal vez para cosas del anime y así, o sea, eh, serían una muy buena recomendación porque pues son estilo conversaciones que a veces están, están teniendo las personas del otro lado y pues eso nos ayuda, ¿verdad? A conocer quizás algunas palabras, algunas estructuras que se pueden usar en diferentes momentos. Entonces, esa sería una muy buena recomendación cuando tengan un poco de tiempo libre o si um, pasan tiempo en el tráfico cuando van a sus trabajos, a la escuela, pues quizá podría ser, ¿verdad? Algo que se podría tomar en cuenta. So, yeah, podcast. And now, coming back for, to Michelle Obama. Well, she, yeah, according to some magazines in the U.S., has been one of the most active first ladies that the U.S. has seen as she was um, always working. Um, most of the first ladies that have been um, in office with their husbands, um, they normally just don't appear on public. They are just like ghosts through the whole process of the presidency. But she is said to be one of the most active ones trying to help people like the less wealthy or the less um how how can we say this so that we don't have um this rude sounding um less fortunate so she has been um promoting many um actions so that the government of the united states can help those people so it will be pretty pretty cool she i i remember i heard in the news that she also created like a multinational group where she had people from like many of the allies of the United States um, to receive help for different com communities. And I think there were a few communities here in El Salvador who were actually helped um, through her office because first ladies, almost in every country, they also have like that um, advantage that they can have their own offices. So I think there was a time when Michelle Obama was helping um, through her office to some communities here in El Salvador. But, okay, before we get to talk about the topic for this evening, I would like to know, do you guys have any questions, um, any doubts that have may popped up in the last couple hours? No. All right, so it seems like there's no questions. Um, so here we have it. Tonight, we are going to be covering, um, as I mentioned, the three-word phrasal verbs. Before we get to that, remember just uh, a friendly and fast reminder. We're not going to do any exercises on this this evening. Just I want you guys to remember how to use this. When we have the active voice, the structure is going to be um, here. As per usual, you can type um, the simple you can and then you use have or get independently. Uh, then a person who are, is going to be in charge of performing a task and then the base form of the verb. Only when you get to use to um, is when you have used uh, over here the verb get. So when you use get, you are also supposed to use to 
here before the base form of the verb, which is going to mean that you're using an um, infinitive. And for this one, for the passive voice, it's very simple as well. You're going to include something like you could. It's very, very much the same as you can. Um, and then you're going to use, well, the formula, which is have or get, with whichever you guys deserve or would like to use. Then the object that is going to be receiving the action. Uh, and then the past participle. And of course, if you are um, in desire of mentioning who can perform the task, you can either add by or something like at if it's a place. So by is going to be used if you're going to refer to a person and at if you're going to talk about a um, place or a shop or somewhere where the person can take that object to be fixed or to be repaired or to get any work done that has to be um, done to the to that uh, specific object. Of course, you can always use by. By is like the most common one and the most recommended one. But still, if it's a place you're going to refer to, you can use at. Very well. So moving on. These are the three word phrasal verbs. And last night, we only had the chance to cover um, broken up with which I remember I told you guys that when you talk about a breakup, it's basically the end of a relationship. So um, I am going to be typing on this side, the base form of these phrases, because all of these are in like the past participle form. Um, so we're going to be looking at them with the regular view, like the basic view on, um, well, the typing form. So here we have it, break up with. So this is the basic form of these um, three word phrasal verb, break up with. And the meaning is to end a relationship. When you um, are no longer in speaking or in dating terms with a person that you were before. Now, how about came or come up with? Come up with. What will be the meaning that you can have or understand for the three word phrase or verb come up with? I would like to hear from Melissa. What is the interpretation you may have for this verb? ¿Cuál sería la idea que nos dé este, uh, este verbo? Come up with. Um, come up with is uh, con contribute or, uh, yes, con contribuir or algo así. Yeah, it's a contribution or an idea you may have. So when you come up with something, it's because you are contributing or you're adding up to um, what others are doing. So you may come up with, normally what we use is going to be something abstract like ideas, but we also can come up with some objects. So if, for example, it's a family gathering, um, you can say, my cousin came up, came up with a cake for the party. So that means that the cousin or your cousin is the one who provided the cake for the party. So come up with is going to be used in um, referring to a contribution or an addition that you have made to a specific cause. Now, looking forward to, or, well, this is look forward to look forward to looking forward to or look forward to what will be a meaning that you can get from look forward to um evelyn something that you are expecting to happen yes very good so something you are expecting to happen so look forward to um if i'm to be completely honest right now something i'm looking forward to happen is uh, the time when I can get to um, to celebrate Aguila winning the championship. Nah, just kidding. Actually, something I'm looking forward to is the time when I finally get to go to bed because it has been a very tiring day. So that's something I look forward to. So you're expecting, you are waiting um, desperately for this specific thing to take place. So you're looking forward to. Now, um, what will be something that you are looking forward to, Evelyn? Maybe 
be the same. I'm looking forward to the weekend. Okay, looking forward to the weekend. Yeah, we are coming from a vacation, but still we are very tired, I think, because it has been the same feeling from almost every person that I have talked to, like almost everybody is feeling tired. Um, how about Emma? What is something you are looking forward to, Emma? I'm looking forward to finish that period of the university. All right, so finish your semester at the university. That yes. will be something you're looking forward to. Very good. How about Joel? What is something you're looking forward to? Um, do you want a sentence using that? No, maybe just something that you are um, expecting to happen. Just an idea. Um, well, I'm looking forward to get a new and better job. All right. Very good. So you're looking forward to getting a new and better job. That's amazing. How about Melissa? What is something you're looking forward to? I uh, Sorry, teacher. I don't have clear. Okay. Looking forward is una frase, un verbo fraseal que usamos para referirnos a algo que estamos esperando, algo que deseamos que suceda. So looking forward to, si algo que estamos esperando que, que por fin llegue. So something you're looking forward to, okay. Melissa? I looking forward to learn English very well. All right, that is a good uh, idea or a good expectation. So you're looking forward to learning English very well. Very good. Uh, how about Beatriz? What will be something you're looking forward to? Uh, for example, I'm looking forward to improve my pronunciation. Oh my God, that's a good example. Yes, you are looking forward to improving um, your pronunciation, which doesn't really have to get much, much better because you guys, all of you are doing pretty well. Um, how about Daniel? What is something you're looking forward to, Daniel? Mm, I'm looking forward to... Uh, have another vacation. <laughs> another vacation? You're going to have to wait until August. August, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think okay. we all are, you know. I'm looking forward to having my sister's graduation because we're supposed to go to Roatan when that happens. But yeah, that's... <laughs> That's just something that uh, we can be expecting. All right. So that's looking forward to when you are expecting something to happen. Um, the next one is cut down on. And this one, as we already know, the verb cut is the same in all its forms in the present, in the past. And if you ever happen to use it in the, in the future, it's going to be the same. So cut down on. What, however, is the meaning of cutting down on? What do you think it is, Joel? The meaning of cut down on. Yes, sir. Maybe to reduce. That will be a very good idea on what cut down on means. To reduce or um, to take something away. If we are going to talk about um, things that can be countable or things that are normally known as countable nouns, you can also say that, you know, to take um, something away from, from a pack or as well to reduce the amount of something. So cutting down on is, for example, if um, you are consuming too much um, coffee in, in, during your days. So you're having seven cups of coffee in a day. That's just, just an example. Um, a friend of yours can tell you, you should cut down on coffee because you're um, having too much of it. So cut down, it's reduce the amount of coffee you are consuming. But in this way, it is a more direct idea on what the person is expecting you to do. Because reduce, well, you can say, okay, I can reduce it a little bit in each of the seven cups, but I'm still going to have the seven cups. But cut down on refers to actually cutting or taking away a part of what you're doing or a part of this thing we are referring to. Or um, for example, 
if you are coming home too late and your family noticed it, they can tell you, you should cut down on this late comings to the house. So cut down, reduce the amount of days in which you get home very, very late. So that's cut down on. Or if you're expending too much money on games or too much money on things that are not useful, um, someone can tell you, you should cut down on that thing. And that refers that you should stop um, uh, putting too much money or spending too much on the specific thing if the topic or the situation is that you are spending. All right, next one up is going to be keep up with, keep up with, keep up with. And what will be the meaning or the interpretation you have for this phrase or verb, Emma? Keep up with. I think it's like when you are following something, but you are no to. Like, it's like you are near of these things that you are following. Yes, that is very, very, very close to the actual meaning. So when you keep up with something, it's because you are either doing it um, equal as you are supposed to, or you are, as you mentioned, very close to um, the expectation. So keep up is, for example, if you're doing a good job, um, you can simply get a phrase like, keep it up. That is not necessarily the one we are using here because here we're using keep up with, all right? It's different to, from um, keep it up or keep up. Keep up simply means to continue doing as you're doing. But when you talk about keep up with, you are making a comparison. So that means that you're doing something equal as you're expected to, or you're a little bit behind on the expectation. Um, for example, we can say that, I don't know, all of you have been keeping up with the classes in Corporativo pretty well. That means that all of you have been connecting, all of you have been participating, all of you have been um, being part of the classes. And that means that you are keeping up with the classes. Um, now, in case that you missed the class, but still you have joined the rest of the classes, that is still keeping up with because you're there. You're very close from um, equal or as we can also refer to it from perfection. So when you keep up with something, is referring to um, the fact that you are performing as you are expected. Sí. Keep up, entonces sería básicamente rendir. Sí. O sea, si están rindiendo, si ustedes están haciendo el trabajo como se esperaba que lo hicieran. So keeping up with. Sí. En español podríamos okay. entenderlo de esa forma. Sí. Dime. I had a question about this one. Mm -hmm. uh, the meaning could change and could it be something like mantenerse al día? Mm -hmm. Could it be? Yes, it can also be used to refer to that when you um, keep up with. Um... I mean, I, I I'm saying this because it's a it's it's a it's a little bit dumb, but you know the, this famous TV show in with the Kardashians, and I hate me for knowing that, but the name is keeping up with <laughs> with them, and and I look for a, a literal translation of this, and and the most pages in the website said that it's mantenerse like mantenerse al día mm -hmm. or, or something like that. So I'm a little I'm a little confused about this one. Yeah, that that is because uh, when you keep up with people, when you don't use it as a verb but as a phrase, because in that case it's being used as a phrase. Um, then you can translate it like that. When you use it as a phrase, then it means that you are um, updating. Sí, y el detalle aquí es que podríamos, por ejemplo, cambiar esto en lugar de keep up a keep updated, updated with. Sí. Entonces, sí, ahí sí ya claramente, ¿verdad? Se referiría yes. a que estás al día. Keep updated with. Entonces, pero a veces, por la misma situación de um, que el inglés en muchas ocasiones quiere ser lo más rápido posible, solo se queda a keep up with. No significa que la palabra que se está cortando es updated, sino que, o sea, up es una preposición en sí misma. Pero se entendería, ¿verdad? Mucho mejor si se escribiese keep, it, keep updated with. 
En ese caso, se podría interpretar por completo el significado en español de mantenerse al día. Por eso mismo, yo les iba a mencionar que en cuestiones de trabajo, podríamos decir, keep me updated. Sí, keep me updated. Updated with, y aquí pues puede ser the project or anything that you are um, working on in your job. Pero en, en cuestiones formales, eh, será mejor que utilicemos la palabra completa aquí, updated. Keep me updated. Y ahí sí, ¿verdad? Se refiere a mantenerme al día. Sí, en solo decir keep me updated. Sorry, keep me updated. Se refiere a mantenerme al día. O actualízame, ¿sí? Cada vez que, que algo suceda. Um, if, for example, a friend of yours is sick and you go visit your friend and you want the family of your friend to let you know if something happens, then you can use this phrase. Uh, instead of telling them, just let me know if something happens because that's the literal thing, you can tell them, keep me updated, please. O sea, que van a pedirles verdad que los mantengan al día. Hay siempre formas diferentes de decir las cosas, porque ustedes pueden decirlo de manera literal y pueden decir, ¿verdad? Uh, let me know if something happens. Eso sería, o sea, muy literal decir, déjeme saber si algo pasa. Pero keep me updated sería una forma un poco más eh, rebuscada y además apropiada quizá en una situación como esa, ¿sí? Entonces, eh, de, de aquí es donde se deriva, ¿verdad?, el nombre del Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Y sí, yo sabía que en algún momento alguien lo iba a mencionar. Porque sí, es una cosa bien famosa. Así que, don't hate yes, yourself. Yes, I had a doubt. Yeah, don't, don't hate yourself for knowing that. We, I think we all okay. have heard of, right. the, of the show at least once. So yeah, keep up it's with it. everywhere. Yeah, it's basically everywhere. And that's basically the reason why those ladies became famous, which I don't get, but still, it's not my job to get that. Um, now, the, sec the next one is poop up with. Poop, put, sorry, put up with, put up with, put up with. And uh, here we have it. Once again, this one is in its basic form, so we're not going to have to do any changes on the verb. And here we have it, put up with. What will be then the interpretation you guys may have for put up with? Um, Melissa, what do you understand for the phrase of verb put up with? Um, is the same to tolerate. Okay, yes, it's basically the same as tolerating. So when you're living a horrible or a very bad situation um, and people are asking you or advising you to continue on forward, even though it's hard, but they are advising you to continue, then they can tell you, put up with it. Yeah, put up with it. Also, put up can be used when we are talking about something in which you have to perform well. Cuando ustedes tienen que dar una buena presentación en algo, también, ¿verdad? Se puede utilizar el put up with. Sí, I have to put up with this presentation because I must get a good grade. So that will be another interpretation, another way in which we can use it. But normally put up with is going to be used to refer to tolerating or to um, holding on to something. When you are um, resisting the, the will of just letting go and just forgetting about the thing, but still you have to put up with it. So put up when you are holding on to something or when you are tolerating something. Um, when you say holding on to, it's basically the same as tolerating. Sería mucho más sencillo, ¿verdad? Mucho más común que lo escuchen de esa forma. Hold on to. Hold on to significa, eh, pues, básicamente lo mismo. Aguantar o tolerar alguna situación, algún problema. All right. Now, the next one is one that I like a lot. Get along with. Get along with. And this one I actually want to hear in, um, sorry, there we go. So in a voluntary way, either of you, what do you guys understand for get along with? ¿Qué entienden ustedes por get along with? Cualquiera de ustedes puede, puede dar su opinión de forma voluntaria. Estar solo con. Ooh, that was Llevarse close. Bien. Yes. Emma? Yes, a good relationship. 
Yeah. Emma, sorry, what were you going to say? Is when you have a good friendship with someone. Yes. Okay, very good. So, Daniel, what you were uh, referring to will be something um, like this. Alone. See, alone. Entonces, ese sería con una E. Pero acá tenemos along, get along. So get along with is when you have a good relationship with someone or when you have a good friendship with someone, um, when you have things in common, um, when you share um, ideas, when you share preferences on something. So that's normally seen as getting along with. Um, when you don't have too many problems with that person, that means that you get along well, which is another of the um, of the words that can be put in between this. Uh, these two, you can say something like get along with, uh, sorry, get along well with. Y eso es un poco más confuso, pero igual, ¿verdad? Es para darle incluso más énfasis a que es una buena relación. So get along with. Significa entonces llevarse bien con alguien. ¿sí? Cuando ustedes tienen um, una buena relación, una buena amistad, con alguna persona específica. All right, and then take care of. Take care of. What does take care of means? Um, Daniel? Cuidarse de. Okay, take care of. Now, cuidarse sería específicamente solo take care. Sí, take care of, por lo general, se va a interpretar como cuidar de. Sí, cuidar de cuando vamos a cuidar a alguien. Pero, igual, ¿verdad? Um, podríamos usarlo para cuidarse de, o sea, para que yo me cuide de, cuando hablamos acerca de situaciones específicas. Por ejemplo, um, before, we could say, take care of the flu, ¿sí? Ten cuidado de, um, de la gripe. Pero, o sea, a lo que se refiere, ¿verdad? Es que ustedes traten de mantenerse apartados de um, las personas que puedan tener gripe, personas que presenten síntomas. So, take care of. Pero por lo general, uh, se va a entender como cuidar de alguien o cuidar de algo. Sí, take care of. So, if a friend of yours asks you to take care of their house, that means that probably they're gone on a trip, they're not going to be at home, but they want you to be watching over that house or taking care of that house. So that is take care of. Very good. Now, now that we have good knowledge on how to use all of them, um, I would like to get phrases. I would like to get sentences for all of this. And I would like to start with Evelyn. What would be a sentence you can create with break up, break up with being more specific? Pueden ser oraciones largas, no hay problema. Y si necesitan ayuda en traducir alguna parte, también, ¿verdad? I broke up with my boyfriend last month. Sería, I just broke up. Broke up with my boyfriend last month. Okay, very good. I just broke up with my boyfriend last month. Espero que no sea cierto y no vayamos a llorar no, después. It's not, it's ok, not no vayamos true. a llorar justo después de... No, me acabo no, de acordar, no, no. profe. No. <ríe> Empieza Laura Sadi de fondo. El violín. Tú me es violín. All right, now, next one is come up with. Sí, come up with. Um, I would like to hear a sentence with come up with coming from um, Joel. Um, it will be come up, came in, in past, right? Came uh, up, yes, up. came, yes, came. Um, let me see. Uh, my best friend came up with this uh, brilliant idea. There we go. My best friend came, came up, up with, with this brilliant idea. With ooh. Dang it. There we go. With this brilliant idea. All right. Yes, so there right. we have it. My best friend came up with this brilliant idea. Sí, mi mejor amigo tuvo esta brillante idea. And then, of course, you are supposed to share the idea. All right. Anyway, um, look forward. 
Um, Daniel, do you have a phrase, a full sentence using look forward or looking forward? Mm, I'm looking forward to uh, I'm looking forward to next Christmas. Okay, to next Christmas. Very good. So that's something you're expecting. So you're looking forward to next Christmas. Amazing. All right. How about um, cut down on? We're going to get a sentence for cut down on from Beatriz. I cut down the soda. Okay, I cut down on soda. I cut down on soda. Ahora, okay. aquí podríamos también decir I must cut down on soda. Porque el detalle acerca de estos three word phrasal verbs es que por lo general son como un estilo de apoyo. O sea, a pesar que sí, ¿verdad? Son un, un, o sea, se refieren a un verbo y funcionan como una acción. Eh, se trata casi siempre de apoyarlos con, no sé, alguna clase de verbo antes. Mayormente en el caso de estos um, que son quizá como un estilo de sugerencia, en el, o sea, se podría entender así. Entonces acá, si colocamos el must, sería verdad, debería reducir uh, pues la cantidad de soda que tomo. Así sería en español. En inglés es mucho más sencillo solo decir, I must cut down on soda. Sí, I must cut down on soda. Ok, very good. Uh, how about keep up with? We're going to hear an example for keep up with coming from Melissa. So tell me, Melissa. Um, I keep up with travel the next year. Okay, traveling next year. Muy bien. Vamos a ver. Um, la idea que estábamos tratando de decir era como en español. Um, que espero viajar el siguiente año. Ok, espero viajar el siguiente año. Um, el detalle es que keep up, sí, si recordamos, se refiere a cuando eh, estamos como manteniéndonos al día con algo, como bien dijimos, ah, o cuando nos, es, ajá, cuando nos esforzamos o tratamos de eh, ir, ¿verdad? Um, como demostrando nuestro trabajo con algo. Podríamos usarlo, pero tendría que hacer algunos cambios, sí. Por ejemplo, um, vamos a decir como... I'm still, I'm planning, sí, I'm planning to keep up, I'm planning to keep up with um, my traveling dreams for next year. Aquí sí, ¿verdad? Estoy tratando de mantenerme al día o estoy tratando de um, esforzarme, ¿sí? Porque pues a eso también se refiere, al esforzarse. I'm planning to uh, keep up with my traveling dreams for next year. Estoy tratando de esforzarme por mis sueños de viajar el próximo año. Entonces así sí podríamos utilizarlo, ¿verdad? Recordemos que looking forward es el que creo que en el que estábamos pensando y ese sí, ¿verdad? Ese se puede utilizar. I'm looking forward Um, traveling next year. Ese, ese completamente se puede usar para algo como esto, pero este sí necesitaba un poquito más de apoyo, ya que el keep up with, o sea, se refiere a eh, esforzarse por algo o eh, demostrar, o verdad, o, o rendir, como mencioné anteriormente, cuando nosotros estamos en algún estilo de proceso, um, ya sea educativo o laboral, estamos, si estamos rindiendo, that means that we are keeping up with the situation. Already, the next one is going to be assigned to um, Evelyn. Now, tell me, Evelyn, put up with. What will be a good example you can place with put up with? You don't have to put up with his behavior. Okay. Vamos a tomarlo entonces así. You will oh, have you, to... You don't have to put up with this oh. bad behavior. All right. You don't have to put up with 
um, this bad behavior. Yeah, there we go. This bad behavior. No, no, I see. <laughs> it, uh, behavior. There we go. Okay, so you don't have, have to put up. Uh -huh, you don't have to put up with this bad behavior. Very good. Very good example. No tenemos, no tienes por qué aguantar esto mal, ese mal comportamiento. Good. How about Emma? Get along with. What will be an example you can place for get along with? I used to take, I used to talk with my neighbor, but I don't get along with her son. Okay. I used to talk with my neighbor, my neighbor, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't, oh, sorry. I don't get along with her anymore. Le ponemos with her anymore. Son. With her son. Oh, sorry, with her son. Oh, ok. Yes. Muy bien. Entonces, Emma teniendo problemas en el vecindario. Uh, <ríe> uy, qué desorden es aquí. Neighbor. Ok, so, um, you used to get along with your neighbor, but now you don't, uh, sorry, you used to talk with your neighbor, but you don't get along with her son. All right, very good. Um, and the last one is going to be take care of. This one is free. So who of you would like to provide an example with a sentence for take care of? Este es libre. Cualquiera de ustedes que guste presentar un ejemplo, you guys can do it. Teacher, I, I need to take care of my family. All right, I need to take care, oh, sorry, take care of my family, my family. Good, oh my God, so here I got a mistake, I knew that. Okay, so there we go. Emma, tell me. My mom gave me two dogs, so I take, I take care of them. All right, my mom gave me two dogs so I take care of them that's a really good example as well my mom gave me two dogs so I take care of them what's wrong with it oh two dogs all right so there we have it so this is how we're going to be using the three word phrasal verbs okie dokie moving on here we have some other examples I'm just going to read them um a little bit fast just so we have another approach on how we can use them jennifer has broken up with her boyfriend again kevin came up with a great idea for a class reunion i am not looking forward to typing my essay maybe i'll get it done professionally my doctor says i'm overweight i should cut down on fatty foods Rob can't keep up with the students in his Mandarin class. He should get a tutor. I can't put up with the noise on my street. I'll have to move. My girlfriend doesn't get along with her roommate. They're always fighting. Bill can't take care of his own finances. He has an accountant manage uh, his money. So these are other examples, as I previously mentioned, for the different um, three word phrase words we had previously. Here we have the actual meanings for all of them. For example, the first one, um, break up with, means be excited. Oh, wait, no. Oh, no, 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 no. This is uh, when, oh, no, this is all shovel. Sorry, this is all shovel. So I'm going to go ahead and bring them back down here, which I think I had lost because I, 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 I erased that. So we're going to do it um, on our own. So be excited for something to happen. This is look forward to. And a romantic relationship. This is break up with. Keep pace with someone or something. This is keep up with. Talk, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, keep up with. Keep up with. Tolerate something you don't like put up with, reduce the amount 
or the quantity of something. This means cut down on. Have a good relationship with someone. Get along with. Be responsible for something. Take care of. Think of something or develop an idea. Come up with. Come up with. So those are the meanings for um, the different three word phrase or verbs. And now here I have a few more that I would like to share with you guys. The first one is look down on, look down on. Next one is get away from, get away from. Then we have live up to, live up to. Then get away with, get away with and look up to. So starting from top to bottom, the first one, look down on. What do you guys think the meaning of look down on is? Um, we're gonna take the idea of Beatriz. Do you have any idea for the meaning of look down on? Look down on. No teacher, I don't have idea. All right, how about um, you, Joel? Do you have any idea for the meaning of look down on? Actually, teacher, I don't have the slightest idea, but I'm searching it right now. And Google said that is um, something like uh, despreciar. Mm -hmm. Look down, ver de menos. Es como, ajá, ver, ver hacia abajo, look down on, sí, despreciar. So look down on. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean that it's only going to be used from people to people. You can also look down on some ideas. You can look down on um, something people offer you to eat or something like that. But normally the use for look down on is going to be the feeling you get from someone who doesn't show you respect or who doesn't show you any um, kind of, let's say, attention when you're like in a meeting or something like that. So that is look down on. All right, now, get away from. Evelyn, any idea for the meaning of get away from? I don't have an idea, but I think that is something bad or something that can be, I don't know. Get away from normally means to put some distance between you and it can be a person or a situation. So it's kind of literal, you know, getting away from, just like separating, just putting some distance in between the two things. Uh, it can be a situation or a person and you or the person who you are talking to. Um, tell me, Hoyle. Yes, about this one, get away with, I remember, Remember the, that there was a TV show that was called How to Get Away with Murder, mm -hmm. and it means like salirse con la suya mm -hmm. or something like that. Could it be? Exactly. Yes, ex ex exactamente significa eso. Get away with. See, when you get away with something, is because you were misbehaving or lying about something, and no one discovered it, or at least um, the people who you didn't want to find out, they never found out. So um, get away with means to es escaparse o salirse con la suya, como bien tú dijiste. So that's the meaning for get away with. Now, leave up to, leave up to. Um, Emma, any idea on the meaning for leave up to? No, I don't have an idea. Okay, um, how about Daniel? Any idea for live up to? For live up to, mm -hmm. live up to. Where am I, teacher? Live up to. Fíjate que San Google me pone vivir con arreglo a dice. Okay, live up to. En realidad, eh, se va a entender cuando ustedes están tratando de demostrar, sí, que pueden hacer algo. So, este sería una frase muy común. Live up to your expectations. O sea, que pueden um, demostrar que uh, 
uh, van a cumplir con las expectativas de alguien. Sí, live up to your expectations, como tratar de esforzarse para llegar, ¿verdad? A cumplir uh -huh. con esas expectativas. Entonces, este no es uno que tenga una traducción tan directa al español. Es, una, es un three-word phrase server mucho más común en inglés, pero... Eh, se va a entender o utilizar cuando eh, hablamos acerca de eso, ¿verdad? Cuando estamos eh, explicándole a alguien que queremos ser capaces o queremos llegar a cumplir con sus expectativas o con las ideas que puedan tener acerca de nosotros, pero pues quizá por algún motivo no podemos o, en caso contrario, estamos haciéndolo, ¿sí? Uh, o sea, si por ejemplo estamos haciendo algo bien, le podemos decir, ¿verdad? I'm just living up to your expectations. I'm just living up to what you wanted from me. Entonces, a uh, eso se refiere por lo general el live up to. Y este es uno de los, de los phrasal verbs que es bien, bien dependiente de la otra persona, live up to. Ok, and the last one is look up to. Look up to se va a utilizar siempre que ustedes eh, quieran expresar admiración. Sí, este es bastante similar al look forward to, pero el look forward to se refiere, ¿verdad?, a esperar algo, que algo suceda. En cambio, look up to se refiere a eh, lograr algo. Sí, o sea, es como que um, ustedes pueden decir, I look up to my graduation. Es como estoy esperando mi graduación, estoy um, pues esforzándome para llegar a mi graduación. Y otro de los usos más comunes es cuando ustedes hablan acerca de alguien a quien, a quien ustedes admiran. Sí, I look up to, ahí pueden mencionar, ¿verdad? Aquella persona a quien ustedes admiran. Entonces, este puede ser uno de los usos más comunes para el three-word phrasal verb de look up to. Pero bueno, mañana podemos continuar trabajando uh, un poco más acerca de ellos. Solamente recordarles que esta semana... Al igual que las semanas anteriores, por lo mismo el caso de la vacación, ¿verdad? Será una semana que tengamos clase hasta el viernes, así que no será mañana nuestra última clase, sino que vamos a tener clase hasta el día viernes. Bueno, so that's it for this evening, guys. It went by pretty quick. And, well, hopefully tomorrow we're going to have more time to share some more ideas. And, uh, well, I just wanted to thank you once again for your attention and for your active participation during the lesson. Um, I will be expecting to see you or I'm looking forward to seeing you guys here on our next class. So see you tomorrow and have a really good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, teacher. See you hey, tomorrow. Bye-bye.